Thank you. How many of you woke up to an alarm clock today? Any alarm clockers? How many of you slept in this morning because it was Sunday? Uh, what do you do during the week? On Monday morning, will you turn that alarm clock back on? What's the first thing you do in the morning when you get up, when you open your eyes, when you get out of bed? How many of you go on autopilot to the coffee pot? That's what I do. Do you follow the same basic routine every morning? Most of us do. Our morning routines allow us to get done what needs to get done. They're very comfortable and familiar. They add strength and vitality and purpose to our day. And perhaps most importantly, they set the tone for the day. For many of us, our morning routine is about to change. It's time to go back to school this week. Whether we're students or teachers, parents, grandparents, family or friends, a shift in the morning is going to happen. As Pastor Scott said, um, my name is Natalie Huya, and I'm a member of the church. I'm an 11 o'clocker, like most of you are. Um, I grew up in this church, in the First United Methodist Church. My parents, Butch and Nancy Loomis, tomorrow will celebrate their 41st wedding anniversary. They got married right here in the sanctuary. Um, my husband Craig and I just celebrated our 10th wedding anniversary, again, right here in the sanctuary. And you may have seen my children running around. Uh, Thaddeus is seven and going in second grade. Aurelia is five, going into kindergarten. And Daniel is four, going into preschool. You might wonder why I'm giving you all of this information. Um, I just want you to realize that my morning routine is jam-packed. And tomorrow morning, it's going to change. I'm going to talk to you today about how to supercharge your own morning routine. Whether you're starting a new one with the start of school or continuing on with the same, by incorporating God into the simple steps of your morning, we can draw from him and be energized and protected as we face the world each morning. To supercharge the morning routine, I'm going to give you seven suggestions that you can add to the things you're already doing. I'm not giving you extra things to do. Believe me, I don't have time to do extra things in the morning. But I can add purpose to what I am doing. As we go through each step, you'll see that I've identified the step and the purpose and also based that on scripture. In my own home, even though my husband doesn't like it, I have index cards with Bible verses taped to cupboards and walls. Not exactly high fashion in the home. But in those key spots, they can help me remember. So as I'm going through my routine, I don't have to stop and look up a verse in the Bible it's already there to inspire me. As a professor, I encourage you to take what you will from what I'm about to share with you. Maybe you'll remember a step or a purpose or a Bible verse, and I hope for all of you that you can draw something from this that you can incorporate into your own routine. My first step, awake! Now we begin the day. Awake with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came to us when Jesus went to heaven. Jesus says in John 14, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. The Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Wow! Now that is how I want to wake up 
every morning. Connect with the Holy Spirit within you. Tune into your own teacher and guide. The next step we can't skip over, cleanse. We cleanse to wash away the unwanted. At the same time, it's important to surround yourself with what you do want. What about love? Cleanse with love. 1 Corinthians 13 states, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Wash that away. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. That is the best shower gel that I can recommend. Cleanse yourself with love. Feel the warmth of God's love embrace you in the morning. Step three, clothe. Yes, you can't skip this one either. <laughs> Ephesians 6 states, put on the full armor of God. So when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up that shield of faith with which you can extinguish all of the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit with the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Clothe with the armor of God. Those verses are so direct. As I'm getting dressed, I can remember to put on my belt of truth, also known as Spanx in my house, <laughs> uh, my blouse of righteousness, as I'm styling my hair, put on the helmet of salvation. This step is so simple. Simply have the right frame of mind as you're getting dressed. Now step four, nourish. And let me just tell you, if you ever wanna to go to the nine o'clock service, they feed you. We should all eat breakfast. At this time, it doesn't matter what diet you're on. Let's nourish with the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5 states, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. Personally, I like second and third helpings on this one, especially as a parent with three small children that I have to get ready for school in the morning. Step five, rejoice. Do you ever sing in the morning, in the shower? Do you pray in the morning? There's a prayer that I say many times throughout the day in bits and pieces not just in the morning. When I first wake up, when I pull into the parking lot at school, when I walk into the classroom, rejoice with gratitude. I love Psalm 136 because I can always adapt it to my circumstances, and it always works. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks for the, to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords. His love endures forever. A prayer of thankfulness and love. I like to use this in fives. When things are getting crazy in my life, I stop and breathe. And then I say this with five immediate things in the moment. 
For example, give thanks for the air I breathe. His love endures forever. Give thanks for the light that I see. His love endures forever. Being thankful for the simple blessings in every moment helps to center me and feel connected to God. And I guarantee you'll get some warm fuzzies with this one. Step six, inspire. There are many ways to get direct guidance from the Bible. I used to randomly open the Bible and read the passage. Sometimes I follow a devotional track or look up a specific theme in the scripture. There isn't a right or a wrong way to read the Bible. The only key is you have to open it and you have to read. Inspire with the word. In John 4, there's a story about Jesus and a Samaritan woman. What is important about this story is that it's a great example of what a phenomenal teacher Jesus is. When Jesus encountered this woman, she was an outcast to society. She had had five husbands and was working on number six. She was a, of a mixed race and a lower culture for the time. She worshiped the wrong things, and she was a woman, not a man. Jesus found her at the well, at the hottest point in the day. When everyone else was staying cool in their homes, that was the only time she felt safe and comfortable to go out and draw her water. She was all alone. I don't know about you, but I have been there many times. Jesus loved her. Jesus accepted her, and he gave her what no one else did, attention and respect. Jesus has compassion for all people, regardless of gender, race, or background. I aspire to be such an awesome teacher like Jesus. All right, you've been hanging with me this far. We're now at step Seven, the last one, protect. I always pray aloud with my children as we drive to school each morning, in the van. Honestly, some mornings it is the only time that all four of us are quiet and seated together. Regardless, it is always my last opportunity to guide them and seek protection to keep them safe. And so I pray. Protect with prayer. Paul prayed for the Colossians, and I pray the same for you. Since the day I heard about you, I have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with knowledge, knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding, and I pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Amen. Shine on and shine that light and be warm in the protection of that spirit. As you go through your morning routine this week, I encourage you to connect with God in each and every step. Awake with the Holy Spirit Cleanse with love, clothe with the armor of God, nourish with the fruit of the Spirit, rejoice with gratitude, inspire with the word, protect with prayer. May God bless you and thank you.